Do you want to create wonderful 3D Halloween scenes in Blender? Well, I've got just the thing. This is a free asset pack I made, link in the description, with creepy, spooky objects, and I'm going to show you how I made the scene from those assets. So I made a Halloween scene last year, which looks like this. My colleagues at Game Dev TV have turned this into a useful asset pack with some extra objects, and I wanted to see whether I could make a different style this year and give you some general advice and guidance on how to go about making scenes from packs like this. So let's get straight into it. First of all, I deleted the base. I wanted to create a different type of look, so I didn't want the sort of floating island. I wanted a proper floor, shall we say. So I put in a plane, I subdivided it a lot of times, and then I just went across the sculpting tool to make some sort of landscape out of this. I've positioned my camera so I know exactly what I'm ending up with. I would certainly recommend doing that, particularly if you're doing a still scene like this or a slow zoom in. That way you can work on the composition straight away rather than having to move things around once you've set up your scene how you like it. And you can see that I'm scaling the objects slightly and deforming them slightly, that doesn't matter too much, it's all about the end result. Once I've done that and got the things into a relatively nice position, then I went across to the shading tab to think about the lighting. I've put a big cube in surrounding the whole of the scene and that's going to be my volumetric, so I've put a simple principled volume node and plugged it into the output and I put the density right down to something like 0.001 or something like that so it's very subtle and just a light fog basically. Then I just go around copying elements and moving them into position, maybe slightly moving and adjusting the actual camera as well. The cat in this is still the main focal element so we're trying to lead the viewer's eyes into that position and hence all these sort of curve around that point. So things are generally sloped in towards that direction to supposedly lead the eye. I wanted this to have a slightly more realistic element so I brought in a background image of a sky at night, a very sort of moody sky. I used the image as planes add-on so I could easily bring it in and then I hooked it up to the emission. It's got the alpha hooked up there as well, you don't actually need that because it's not transparent. If you're going to use an image in the background you need to plug it into both the diffuse and the emission so it's nice and bright in the background. I think I set my emission to 2 so it does actually give off a little bit of light as well but I do actually put a spotlight in the background in the end as well to give it that moonlight look. Now I'm just moving around the pumpkins and the candles into position and again I'm trying to lead the eye into the middle so you've got a sort of line of pumpkins going towards the cat. If I'm honest this was a tiny bit awkward because I had the pumpkin top and the pumpkins as separate objects, they really needed to be joined together, I think in the pack they are joined, and the lamp inside really needs to be joined as well so you can just select it as one object and move it about. And you can see here I'm setting up the spotlight in the background. A blue light is very nice for moonlight and I'm trying to go for an uh, orange and blue look to the whole scene. So no other colours except orange and blue. You can certainly see the effects of the sort of mist or fog with the principled volume node. I think I turned the density down a little bit later on because it feels a bit too much at the moment. But it's kind of fun if you wanted that sort of look. I'm moving the railings into position as well and later on I move them so they kind of point up towards the cat, again leaning inwards trying to focus the attention on the cat in front of the moon. Now I would say there are two elements to setting up a scene like this. One is positioning your items and two is lighting. I would actually go as far as to say that the lighting is the most important out of these two. It's difficult to say because you can't really have one without the other, but lighting seems to make the real difference here. And for the most part, this scene is now built, I suppose. There's not much more to add in. I think I add a few sort of paving slabs so it makes a pathway, again, leading lines into the middle of the image. But apart from that, it's all about tweaking the lighting and trying to get it to work. So the majority of this scene building was me just playing with the lighting settings, with the fog settings. I do actually have an HDRI in the background as well, but I don't really use it. I think I turned that off in the end, but again, I was experimenting with that. Because you don't want a completely one directional light, you want a little bit of bounce light in there. If I only have the background light, then everything's kind of in a silhouette, as it were. And you can kind of see that going on here. And I feel like it just needs a little bit more bounce light in there so the objects aren't completely silhouetted and completely sort of black and white as it were. 
I'm fairly happy with the scene now and I start adding in a few rocks on the floor. It's quite important to break up the floor and I would have liked to have spent a little bit longer on this, maybe done a particle system of some orangey coloured leaves or something like that, but it kind of worked out in the end. This is the first time I actually do a proper render just to make sure that everything's working and it's at this point I start thinking about the render setting, so the contrast and the curves. I've very rarely used the curves but I've seen people use them very successfully on photography programs that I sometimes watch so I thought I'd take the opportunity to give it a try myself. I've certainly got a lot to learn but I was trying to go for bringing the oranges and the blues out quite a lot so those are kind of the only two colours and they're really bright and vivid. One thing I was noticing a lot at this point is that it felt a little bit lifeless so I thought I'd add just a little bit of texture to the trees and it really is just a random texture pasted onto the trees. I think I used a brick texture in the end just because it broke the surface area up that little bit. At this point I wasn't that happy with the fog so I set up a mist pass as well as my big cube with volumetrics just to see if that would make any difference and then I went into the compositor, put that mist layer through a colour ramp, then into a mix node to combine it with the background image with the screen setting or the screen blend mode on and that added just that little bit of extra volume to the mist as it were in the right places. The mist pass, as it's known, is just very similar to the depth pass and uh, that's something that's worth looking up in terms of compositing. At this point I felt like my floor tiles were a bit too bright so I just chucked the texture onto them, put it into a bump map and put the bump right up. Because I did want them to be shiny but I didn't want them to be really really shiny so that bump helps to break up the shine. So at this point I do think that things are getting there and I'm starting to position and sort a few things out. I was becoming aware at this point though that it felt a little bit cluttered. It's meant to feel a little bit claustrophobic with all these windy trees that look quite spooky and dangerous but it just seemed to be a bit too cluttered and some of these things were overlapping each other a bit too much and breaking up the image too much as well. So I've actually sped the footage up a bit here because there's lots of little bits of tinkering which are kind of boring to watch really if I'm honest. There's a fair bit of going backwards and forwards really because once you change one thing you have to change something else to compensate and getting that right balance can be a little bit tricky. I did want a bit more of a natural silhouette around the outside so I brought in some branches and put them at the bottom. They're basically a whole tree but just an edge of it showing in the image. And there we have it, the final scene. Let me know what you think in the comments below and whether you've got any thoughts or advice for me. If you do choose to download the pack and make some sort of Halloween scene from it, then tag me on Instagram or Twitter or whatever it might be so I can see your work. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.